welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are finally going to be doing that mystery art doll challenge that is dinosaur themed. I picked about 10 to choose from so I have them in a little cup and I'm going to draw from that to see what we're going to do. Okay, so let's get started on this. So I've got the same little jar. I know I said I was going to use a hat this time but uh, I didn't find a cute hat that I wanted to use. So I'm going to pull from here a random piece of paper. Okay, I got a piece of paper. You can see that I wasn't looking. Let me set that down. Okay, and we are actually doing, I don't know if you can read that, focus, an Archaeopteryx. If I'm saying that correctly, I believe I am. I'm pretty good at saying that one. I know there's a few in here I'm not sure if I can pronounce or not. Okay, so we're going to be doing an Archaeopteryx. That's going to be really fun because we can actually use a lot of fun colors with the feathers and stuff. Anyways, let's get started. Okay guys, the first thing I'm going to work on is going to be the sewing for the body. Now an Archaeopteryx is known for its feathering. I believe it's one of the first dinosaurs it was discovered had feathers because they fossilized along with the bones. You can always double check with this because I'm not 100% sure. But anyways, the body is going to be very bird-like. So the pattern right now looks like a naked chicken. I have my pattern broken up into a bunch of different segments because I want to have a bunch of different colors for the fur fabric that's going to imitate the feathers. And then you're going to need a strip of fabric to go down the back of the dinosaur and the belly of the dinosaur. This is going to be the back and the belly along with the length of the tail. So right here I have the sides of the body. I have it broken up into all the colors that I want to use. And now I need to sew all these pieces together to make one solid piece. And then right here I have the pieces for the wings. You're going to need a left and a right for each wing, and I want to break it up into having more of a lighter color at the base of the body, and then the outer feathers are going to be a darker red. So right now I need to sew these two pieces together as well for all of the wing pieces. And then the other pieces of fabric that you're going to need is a strip of fabric for the back and the belly. I decided I wanted the back to be a kind of khaki color, and the belly is going to be white. And then lastly, you're going to need the inside parts of the legs. Okay, now that we have all the different colors put together into a more solid pattern, we're going to start putting these pieces together as well. So I'm going to start on the wings, and basically I'm going to take a left and a right, and we're going to sew down the front of the wing only. We're going to leave the back open because we need to add some more feathers to it later. And then we're going to take the left and right body piece and take those inside parts of the legs and we're going to sew down the front of them. We're going to leave the back open because we're going to have this on a wire frame and it's going to be a lot easier to put on the wire frame if you have that open. After that, we're going to take the strip of fabric that's going to be for the belly and we're going to start sewing from the bottom of the neck going all the way down the belly. We're going to connect a body piece to each side of the belly piece. After that, this is what your body piece will look like inside out. I have it inside out so you can see it a lot better. And then you can tell that all the extra belly piece is hanging out at the end and that's going to be used for the tail. So that's all the sewing that we have right now. Of course, there's going to be more when we start putting everything together, but we don't have to worry about that until later. So now we're going to move on to making the clay pieces. Now the first bit of clay that we're going to work on is going to actually be the hands for the Archaeopteryx. Basically how an Archaeopteryx's wings are is they're not full wings. They haven't completely transitioned from being an arm to a wing. So they're more used for gliding and protecting than anything else and they still have fingers and claws at the end of them. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a little hand to go at the end of the wing that has about three fingers. So I have a very simple wire frame for the base of this and what I'm going to start doing first is I'm going to work on the claws. So I'm going to add a little bit of clay to the end of each wire and I'm going to shape it into a claw. Once I have all the claws in place, I'm going to put this in the oven for probably uh, about 20 minutes just to make sure they're nice and hardened. They're not fully baked at this point, they're just hard enough that we don't have to worry about bumping them and breaking them. Now we are going to be doing the same thing for the legs as well. Of course I have a different wire frame set up. These are going to be more bird-like legs. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add a little bit of clay to the end of them to make the claw. And we're going to bake these together with the fingers. Once those are out of the oven and have cooled to touch, we can start working on adding more clay to the wire frame to make the fingers. So I'm going to work on the under part of the fingers first. I'm going to add clay to the wire, blend it together, kind of add some wrinkles and some bending points to where the finger would have kind of joints. 
And then once I'm done with the bottoms of the hands, I'm gonna put these in the oven again for probably another 20 to 30 minutes so that's nice and baked and then we can work on the top of the hand. Now what I'm going to be doing for the tops of the hands is I'm going to roll out a bunch of small little clay balls and I'm going to layer them going down the finger. Once I have them all in place, I'm going to use my tools to kind of separate them and maybe even divide each ball into more scales. Once I'm happy with the look of this, I'm going to put them in the oven for one final bake. This is probably going to be about 30 to 40 minutes long. Now we're going to move on to finishing the feet for the Archaeopteryx. And this is basically the same type of thing as doing the hands, except it's just in a different shape. So we're going to work on the bottoms of the feet first and doing the back of the leg. And then we're going to add some wrinkles and different things to that to add some texture. Once we like the shape of all of that, we're going to put this in the oven for again probably 20 minutes, 275 Fahrenheit. Now one thing I did add to the back of the foot was I added a dew claw. I didn't add a ton of detail, I mainly had this for support. That's one reason I added it, another reason is the Archaeopteryx does have the dew claw. Now the tops of the feet I want to have larger scales than what we did for the fingers, so I'm not going to divide them as much. Now again, once we have all the clay on the wire and it's smoothed together, we can start adding some detail to it. So I'm going to use a lot of different tools to add some textures, wrinkles, bumps, whatever I really want to get the um, skin texture that I want for the legs. Once I'm happy with the legs, I'm going to bake these a final time for probably about 40 to 45 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. Now the last bit of clay that we need to work on is going to be the face. To make the head of the Archaeopteryx, the first thing I needed to do was to make a core. So I took a lump of tinfoil and I shaped it into a nice little cone. So I'm going to take that lump of tinfoil and I'm going to completely cover it in clay. I'm going to smooth everything out and then we can start adding different details. I think I want this piece to have a open mouth so you can see all the teeth. So after I have the cone of tinfoil completely covered in clay, I'm going to take another piece of tinfoil and I'm going to cover that in clay and this is going to be the bottom jaw. After I have both of these pieces completely covered in clay, we need to put them together. So I'm going to take the bottom jaw and I'm going to push it into the bottom part of the face and then I'm going to add some more clay and start blending it together to make one solid piece. I'm going to use my tools to kind of add some texture and shape to the inside part of the mouth and then I'm also going to add a strip of clay to make the tongue. So I'm going to place that inside, add a little bit of a curl or a ripple to it to make it look organic and then we need to add the teeth. The teeth, all I did to make the teeth was I basically took a little ball of clay and I rolled it into a cone and I already have these baked. That way I can just push them into the clay and we can add the lips and everything around them. So I'm going to push my teeth into place where I want them. I might add a few teeth that aren't baked and then once I like that I'm going to add some strips of clay to the face to make the lips going around the mouth. I'm going to start with the bottom jaw and then I'm going to do the same thing to the top jaw. Now I'm going to add the eyes to the face. So I'm just going to add some clay balls where I want the eyes to go. I'm going to push them into the side of the head and then I'm going to add some strips of clay to make the eyelids. After I like the placement and shape of the eyes, I'm going to start adding more clay to the face just to change up the shape of it. Now with this piece, I do want to add a lot of feathering to the face. I don't want it to be completely clay, so I'm probably going to cover up the sides with some fur fabric, along with the very top of it, kind of give it like a crest of feathers. So while I'm sculpting the face, I am going to leave some blank spots, just because we're going to add different things there other than clay detail. So right now what I'm doing is I'm going to be adding some scales to kind of frame the different details that we're going to add later. So I'm going to add scales to the very top of the head, not where we're going to add the feathers, but more framing where I want the feathers. And then I'm going to do the same thing around the lips and other details. Once I'm happy with how the face looks, I'm going to bake this in the oven for probably about 45 to 55 minutes. And then while those are baking, we're going to start working on the feathers for the tail and the wings of the Archaeopteryx. So the feathers of the Archaeopteryx, I'm going to be making them out of felt. I'm going to be using a bunch of different browns, reds, and kind of a little bit of a purplish red. 
Now to make the feathers, you're gonna have to make a pattern for each layer. So basically what I did was I drew out the shape of the largest feathers first, I made sure I liked how that looked, and then I made a smaller pattern to layer on top of that. So I used these patterns to cut out my felt, and now I just need to glue everything together. So I'm gonna be using E6000 glue to connect all the layers of felt together. So I'm gonna start with the tail first. The base of the tail is going to be a brown felt, and then I'm going to use those reds and those purples for the very top feathers. And then I'm doing the same thing for the wings. So I'm just going to be taking the feathers for the smaller layer and gluing them on top of the larger layer. These will have to be set aside to dry, but that's okay. We're basically ready to start on some of the painting for the clay pieces. So we're going to be painting the legs and the hands of the Archaeopteryx now. So for the painting, the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to primer them a color that I want to start with. So I'm going to be taking a darkish kind of brownish red color and I'm going to go over all the clay pieces. Right now we're not working on the face, we're actually going to be painting that last once everything is put together. Once that primer layer is finished, we can start adding some detail to it. So I'm going to start with the hands first. So I'm going to take some lighter colors and I'm going to start painting the scales on the very tops of all the fingers. I'm using kind of a khaki color, and once that's dried, I'm going to go over it again to add a little bit more red to it. After that, I'm going to paint the skin that goes around the claw and the claw itself. And then finally, I'm going to add a little bit of a white highlight to the scales. For the back legs, I'm doing a very similar technique. Basically, I'm lightening the scales on the very front of the feet and I'm adding colors to it. But I'm going to be using a little bit of a different color tone for it to make them look a little bit different. So I'm going to go over all the scales on the front of the feet. I'm going to lighten them up and then I'm going to go over it with a little bit of a red and then a yellow. Once I like how the scales look, I'm going to move on to painting the claws and the skin that goes around the claws, just like we did with the hands, and then I'm going to add a little bit of a white highlight to the scales. After all of our paint has dried, I'm going to go over all of these with a nice layer of resin to help protect the paint, and these are going to have to sit overnight. Once they're done, we can start putting everything together. Okay, it's the following day, all of our resin has dried so our pieces are fine to work with. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the legs and I'm going to connect them to the wire frame. I'm going to use a thinner wire and I'm just going to wrap all the wires together. After that, we're going to take our body that we sewed earlier and we're going to connect it to the wire frame. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the fabric for the legs and we're going to glue that around the ankles of the clay legs. So I'm going to be using a combination of E6000 glue and hot glue to hold everything together. So I'm going to glue that fabric into place, I'm going to let it dry, and then once that's dried we can sew up the back of the legs and stuff them. Now we need to work on the wings. So I'm going to do the same thing that we did with the clay legs, I'm going to connect the clay hands to the ends of the wire. Now I'm going to take the fabric for the wings and I'm going to sew those onto the body. So I'm going to sew the bottom part of the wing onto the fabric for the body. And then what we're going to do is we're going to end up wrapping this around the wrist of our hand and gluing that in place. After we're done gluing the fur fabric around the wrist, we're going to move on to adding the feathers to the wings. So I'm going to take our felt wings and I'm going to glue the fur fabric on the top of the wing and the bottom of the wing. Now we can add the head to the piece. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue the head onto the wire frame. Once that's dried, I'm going to take the fabric for the neck and I'm going to glue it around the base of the head. Next, I'm going to take that strip of fabric that's going to go down the back of the dinosaur and I'm going to glue it to the base of the head. Once that glue has dried, we can finish sewing up the body. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to stuff the rest of the body and we're going to sew down one side of that strip and then the other side of that strip, closing everything off. Once you're done sewing the rest of the body, we can now work on the tail. So you'll notice you have two strips of fabric for the tail. One is a top, one is a bottom. So we're going to take our felt feathers for the tail and we're going to glue those to the fur fabric strips for the tail. We're going to make sure that we sandwich the wire for the tail in between these layers. Now at this point, the body is basically all finished. Now we need to finish the face. So I'm going to start adding some fur to the face. I'm just taking little trimmings of my fur fabric and I'm gluing it into place where I want it. I'm going to be gluing it down the sides and I'm also going to be doing the chin. 
Basically what I'm doing for this is I'm taking my E6000 glue and I'm painting on a layer onto the clay. That way the whole surface where I want to be furred is covered in glue. Then I'm going to take my fur trimmings and I'm going to push that into the glue and we're going to make sure it's all positioned where we want it and we're going to let that dry. Once all the fur is in place and it's dried, we can start on the painting. So the first bit of painting I'm going to work on is the inside part of the mouth. So I'm going to paint it a nice black color to kind of fill everything in and make it look nice and shadowed. So now I'm going to be continuing that black paint and I'm going to go all the way around the bottom of the jaw. I'm going to meet right where the fur fabric is. Now before that paint dries, you're going to want to take a toothbrush or something that's really soft on the fur and you're going to brush the paint into the fur to kind of blend it out. This will keep it from just being a sudden stop from black to the red fur color. It's kind of going to add a little bit of a fade. So I'm just going to brush that paint into the fur until I like the shade of it and then we're going to continue doing this to the rest of the face and probably lightening the top part. I'm not going to do the black to the very top of the head. I want to have it more of a kind of a khaki orange color. Okay, so the face is basically primer. This is basically primering it and blending it into the fur. And now we can start adding some details to it. So I'm going to go over the teeth with a nice white. I'll probably have to do a few layers of this because you're doing white over black and it's really hard to not have the black show through. Now for the eyes, I want them to be a nice bright red, so I'm just going to paint the eyes a red color and then I'm going to paint a black pupil in the middle of it. This is going to be a slit pupil and then I'm going to add a little bit of a white highlight and stuff to it. Once I'm happy with how the face looks, I'm going to let everything dry and then I'm going to go over the clay parts that don't have fur on them with a nice layer of resin. I'm going to let this dry overnight and then your Archaeopteryx is basically finished. Unless you want to add anything else to it like more feathering or whatnot. Okay guys, and that's how I did a Archaeopteryx. I had so much fun with this challenge. I'm going to have him along with a bunch of other creatures in my Etsy shop. So make sure to check the links down below for that if you want to buy anything. Also remember tomorrow we're going to have part two of making my giant griffin. So keep an eye out for that. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.